So let's talk about journal entries and debits and credits. What are debits and credits? Debits and credits are ways to change an account balance. They are the mechanism that allows us to move balances either up or down. Uh, debits are on the left of the T account and credits are on the right of the T account. And sometimes debits make an account go up and sometimes debits make an account go down. It depends on which account. Now that may sound overwhelming, but hang in there. We'll give you a quick way to calm it down. Debits do not mean increase. For some accounts it means an increase, but for others it means a decrease. So credits do not mean decrease. It could be uh, either one. So debits are, are not good or bad. Credits are not good or bad. They're just mechanical ways to change an account. So let's just look on the left here. For assets, expenses, and dividends, a debit makes it go up and a credit makes it go down. If you remember the one on the left, everything else is the reverse. So what, well, assets, what else is on the balance sheet? Liabilities and equity. Okay, they're over here. So for liabilities and equity, a debit makes it go down and a credit makes it go up. Okay, well, what else is there in the income statement? Hmm, revenues. Okay, there they are, the opposite of expenses. So what I'd like you to do is just close your eyes and think about this. Try to consciously memorize it for about 10 seconds. Just go ahead and do that. Now, in order to do a journal entry, which requires debits and credits, you can't rush to the debit or credit. You have to go through this kind of the sequence, the skill. The first thing to do when you're going to do a journal entry is figure out which accounts are moving, which accounts were impacted by that transaction. And that's fairly hard. In the beginning when you don't know the classic accounts, the traditional accounts for revenue and the tra traditional accounts and expenses and the traditional assets and the traditional liabilities, when you see a transaction you may understand that something moved but not know the name of the thing that moved. And that will come with practice. But the first thing to do is figure out which accounts went up. Did cash go up? Did revenue go up? Which accounts moved? And then, when you know which accounts moved, then you classify. Okay, was that account that moved cash? What is it? Oh yeah, it's an asset. Um, accounts payable went up? Okay, that's a liability. Accounts receivable changed? Okay, that's an asset. Expenses changed? Okay, good, that's down here in this, in this category here. As soon as you know what accounts you have, what type of account they are, and whether they're going up or down, now you can decide if it's a debit or credit. So debits or credits are sort of the last thing that you decide in a transaction. So let's do a few together. Remember to memorize this left side and know that the other things are the opposite. So if you didn't do it in the prior slide, let's do it now. Don't put it off, do it right now. All right, so let's do these few together as practice. For the first one, how do you show new credit sales? So you sold something to a customer, but they didn't pay you. It's a credit sale. A cash sale means that you would get it now, but a credit means they'll pay it on account. They'll pay it in the next month, probably. So accounts receivable is going to go up and revenues are going to go up. All right, for the accounts receivable to go up, accounts receivable is an asset. And to make an asset go up, you've got to debit it. The revenue side is over here. In order to make a revenue go up, you've got to credit it. So the journal entry for this one would be a debit to accounts receivable and a credit to revenue. Let's do the second one. How do you reflect a prepaid insurance getting used up? In other words, prepaid insurance is going to go down. What kind of account is prepaid insurance? It's an asset. We want an asset to go down. Go back over here. What do we have to do to an asset to get it to go down? We have to credit it. So this would credit prepaid insurance and the debit would be to insurance expense to make expenses go up. 
and you can go back up here our debit would make an expense uh, oh excuse me over here debit would make an expense go up let's look at the third one how do you take land you sold off the books okay land is an asset you want it to go down how do you do that an asset you want it to go down you're going to credit it you sold it I guess for cash so cash would go up and that's an asset so you would debit cash and credit land how about showing a customer uh, paying their bill so they're going to pay for something they bought in some prior period okay so they owe you so accounts receivable is going to go down and cash is going to go up accounts receivable and cash are both assets so in order to get cash to go up we have to debit remember assets in order to go up we have to debit and the accounts receivable would go down it would get credited so here are the journal entries for these particular accounts without the dollar amounts if we told you the dollar amounts you could have put the dollar amounts in there but right now we're practicing the debit and credit all right let's let you try a few more why don't you try these freeze your frame Write it on your page, see if you can get it, and then I'll show you the answers in a second. So if we're buying inventory on credit, inventory is going to go up. Inventory is an asset. The way you get an asset to go up is a debit. Uh, you are not paying for it yet, so you're not going to credit cash. Instead, you're going to credit accounts payable. That's going to make a liability go up. You owe vendors. How do you reflect taxes getting paid? Uh, if you owe the taxes, you've got taxes payable. That's going to go down. Uh, a liability, taxes payable, goes down with a debit. And then you're going to uh, make payment. That's how you're making the liability go down. So cash is going to go down. Cash is an asset. In order to get cash, an asset to go down, you have to credit. How do you show off paying off an old loan with the new loan? So the new loan is going up, that's a credit. The old loan is going down, that's a debit, both of these liabilities. How do you show the obligation to pay workers after their work is complete but not paid? So that means you have salaries expense for the effort and you have salaries payable because you owe them and haven't paid them yet. So the expense is going to go up, that's a debit, and the liability is going to go up, and that's a credit. All right, why don't you indicate here, freeze the frame, see if you can do these on your own. Then when you're done, unfreeze the frame and check it. How'd you do? A patent is an asset. AP is a liability. Revenues go up as credit. Expenses go up as a debit. Mortgage loan is an obligation. That's a liability. Salaries payable is another liability cash is an asset. So until you know the type of account you have, it's hard to decide whether or not to make a debit or a credit to get the movement that you need, the balance movement that you need. The key is to memorize and then practice. So there's not a ton to memorize here, right? This isn't 500 things to remember, but it is five things to remember maybe. Okay, so keep practicing and go to Quantum Simulations at www.quantumsimulations.com. Get that transaction analysis unit started and they will help you and tutor and allow you to practice.